In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this avatar inspired scene from scratch in Blender. And I'm gonna go ahead and say this right now, but this was one of my most challenging projects yet. And this project had a lot of layers of complexity to it, so to keep this video under 10 hours long, I'm gonna need to skim over a couple of things, but I'm gonna make sure to show you all of the little tricks I learned along the way, so you can extract those and use them in your own scenes. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's start from the beginning. So I'm super tired because I stayed up almost all night yesterday just thinking about this project and I was like am I even gonna be able to do something like this because I've never done any facial mocap, I haven't done any realistic face sculpts, I don't want to go halfway, I want to make it look like something from the movie if I'm gonna do this. But I think I have an idea of where to start. The first thing I'm gonna need is a scan of my face. So I took my camera and grabbed a bunch of pictures all around my face and then fed those into the free photogrammetry software Meshroom. And the trick here is to do some manual selection on your data. The fewer images we input and the higher quality of those pictures, the better the scan will be. So no blurry images, nothing out of focus and we easily get a result that looks something like this. Definitely workable. But we can't use this as our base mesh since the topology is all messed up. So I created this base mesh with clean topology just using subdivided cubes and now we have these nice and clean loops around the eyes and mouth. Then I could shrink wrap this mesh to my scan and with some smoothing afterwards we have a model of my face with totally acceptable topology. Just as a quick proof of concept for the facial animation, I did this test based on CG Matters uh, face capture video like three years ago and the results were promising, but more on this later. Back in my sculpting blend file, I started working on the shape of this avatar character. And since he will be almost completely naked in the final scene, as these guys are, I had to get the anatomy almost perfect. So this took longer than usual for me, but with the help of a ton of reference images, we have this result. By the way, I made this model using the exact same method that I show in my Blender Monster VFX tutorial. And I, I break it down much more in depth in that video so if you want to be able to create something like this for your own scenes I'd uh, suggest taking a look at that. Honestly I'm really blown away with how well that was received. Yeah thank you guys for the kind comments and I hear you and I've got more stuff like that coming out soon so stay tuned for that. Now it was time to work on the textures of this guy and getting these stripes just right using manual texture painting turned out harder than I had expected. So instead I opened up a new blend file and painted this stripes texture on a plane then rendered that and used that as a texture for my brush. This way I could sort of stencil on this detailed texture a lot quicker. And here's a trick I learned, if you need to rotate this texture to paint in different directions, the shortcut is Ctrl plus F, and uh, this way I could choose which direction the stripes would go in. Once I had the base texture down, I went in and sculpted some details on a higher resolution level. I widened the nose bridge and pushed the eyes further apart to get this characteristic avatar look, and then went in and cleaned up all of the lines of the face like this. And I love this part of character creation because once you start adding some wrinkles and skin texture it really comes to life and starts looking like something really professional. And I'm gonna be honest here, I think in the process of making me into my avatar version I think it lost a lot of the resemblance to my face. I couldn't really put my finger on it but it gave me a new level of respect for the artists who did the characters in the movie. How they were able to push it so far into the stylized territory while still keeping the resemblance of the actors beneath the performance and that's really impressive work and I never really appreciated that back before but um, yeah, I couldn't quite figure it out myself. Once the avatar was finished, I rigged it with Mixamo and then worked on transferring my facial capture footage onto this character. And here's the thing, while researching facial mocap for this project, I learned that most of the consumer mocap that uses your phone works by using the same AR kit shape keys to drive the performance. And this works really well, but in my opinion, it often feels a little bit stiff or robotic. Not like the faces we see in Avatar with this um, intricate detail. So I decided to use the tracker marker method instead, where you draw a bunch of dots on your face, capture that using a facial camera rig, track it and then transfer that motion onto a facial rig in 3D. Now I'm all marked up with a sharpie, which I don't know if that's the best thing for skin, but now I'm gonna use 
my Rococo head rig and literally just mount the camera like this to get a stabilized view of my face. Uh, but yeah, this uh, isn't gonna go away unfortunately, so I'm stuck like this for a few days. So I used my Rococo head rig to capture this footage and then in the blender tracking window I meticulously tracked each and every point on my face. Then this data could be transferred to little armature bones in 3D and deform the face like this. And this is my first time trying something like this, but even then I think the performance comes through pretty damn well. I'm really excited to go into more detail on this topic in a future video and see if we can get some production quality face capture from home so if that's something you'd be interested in seeing consider subscribing so you don't miss that one one thing that really helps bring facial performance to life is dynamic wrinkle maps so I created this custom wrinkle map using sculpting and then use the method described in bad normals wrinkle video to dynamically add these wrinkles based on the compression of the skin and look at that that looks pretty cool to create the human soldiers in this scene instead of sculpting everything from scratch I decided to do a photogrammetry scan of myself as a base. So I put on some military gear, went outside and placed these tripod stands like this to be able to hold this A pose during the capture process. Then I had my brother help me capture this slow video of him walking around me carefully capturing every angle. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the thick of it, everybody knows. And here it really helps to set your f-stop and shutter speed high to get a super crisp video on every frame. Then I did the same thing as with the face scan, manually selected my frames and dropped that into Meshroom. This gave us this scan that I cleaned up in edit mode by merging by distance and then deleting all of the loose geometry. Then to get rid of these parts where the scan didn't capture enough data, I simply used a boolean to cut these areas out and then sculpt it to smooth it out. Then I could reproject these UVs so they're not over overlapping with the rest and in texture pane mode I could use the clone tool to fill in these black areas. I quickly modeled the rifle and the gas mask and this didn't have to be super detailed since it wouldn't be the focus of these shots. And then I slapped that onto my 3D scan to get my final soldier model. Now it's time to bring these characters to life using some motion capture. And here I want to give a huge thanks to Rococo for sponsoring this video. And as you know I use my Rococo smart suit in pretty much all of my videos when there's animation involved but I've never really shown you the process of how you go from putting on the suit to making a final animation like this. And it's actually quite simple. You set up the network settings once using this cable and then all you need to do to get connected the next time is to plug your suit into your power supply which is a normal power bank. And uh, then you can see the software is capturing your data in real time. All you need to do then to have it match your movements perfectly is hit recalibrate, stand in this pose for a few seconds and you're good to go. Now that you hit record, every single motion you do in the real world will be recorded recorded onto this digital armature. And I was really stoked to see that with the new update, the locomotion model is drastically improved from before. Not to say that it was bad before, it was totally usable, but sometimes you'd get these weird knee or hip rotations that you'd have to clean up manually. But after this update, it just works perfectly. And I actually didn't do any cleanup on the final mocap, which is sort of insane. So I recorded all of the actions that I needed, like the jump from the tree, the falling animation, and then the swing. Then in Blender, I could just retarget this animation to my avatar character using the Rococo add-on in Blender. So now we have all of these separate animations, but how do we stitch them into one fluid motion? I like to copy all of the data to one armature, make sure the timing is correct, and then parent the base bone to an empty like this and keyframe that to make sure that all of the animations happen in one spot basically. Then I bake all of that root motion to keyframes and then smooth out the transitions in the graph editor using alt o and uh, we have a smooth continuous animation and look i know getting a suit like this is a little bit of an investment but if you do a lot of scenes with animations you should seriously consider looking into this because i've tried all of the methods the hand animation using the ai uh, motion capture ones and, and all of that honestly the rococo suit is by far the most accurate and easiest thing to use and if you work with animations 
and I haven't got yours yet. What are you even doing? This is like such a good solution. And uh, Rococo were actually willing to give a significant discount just for this channel. So go through the top link in the description and get yours now. Okay, so we have our animated characters and now it's time to spice things up a little bit. I gave my avatar character some clothes like this and to give it some extra detail I used Blender's built-in curves tool to make these complex looking patterns. Just enable the extra curves object add-on in your preferences. Select your object that you want to turn into these uh, knots. Hit shift a and select Celtic links. Then just convert this to a mesh, decimate it to a lower poly count and use the surface deform modifier to parent it to your cloth object. Then I created some hair using a combination of Blender Geonode's hair system and a normal hair particle system. I converted everything to mesh and then extruded the strands a little bit like this to give it some depth. And I know this is a little bit of a cheaty way to make hair but it's easy to understand for me and it renders quite nice. Then to have the braids and these strands on the side here be simulated and also collide with the body I used the free add-on wiggle bones. Simply create an armature for the hair. Select the bones you want to wiggle, give them a keyframe at the start, and this is important, and then hold alt and click bone tail. To get the collision, select your character mesh as a collider, then copy this to selected bones. And as simple as that, we have some realistic hair interaction. And to bake this animation, go to frame 1, reset the physics, and then hit bake animation with everything selected except for the parent. And you're done. And just look at how much the cloth simulation and the wiggle bones hair help sell the animation. It, it adds so much life. Now it was time for the final step, creating the Pandora environment. So I grabbed some assets from Polyhaven and turns out if you just scale everything up it looks sort of alien. So I placed some huge trees around the scene like this and then went in and placed additional vegetation assets to make it feel like a dense jungle. To make these glowing plants that we see in the movie I used this flowers model and modified the material to have an emissive texture. Combined with some volumetric fog this jungle looks quite convincing in my opinion. Now a final layer of detail that you probably won't even see in the final scene but I made the vegetation simulated where the characters walk. So I basically created this low poly proxy of the vegetation, then put the bottom vertices in a vertex group like this, then simulated it as a cloth object with a vertex group as pinning. Then to have the high poly vegetation follow this movement, I used the surface deform modifier and then finally gave it a corrective smooth modifier to get rid of some of this weird bending. And after all of this was done, the sculpting, the mocap animation, the simulations on top of that and the environment. This was the final scene that we ended up with. Man, I hate the environment. Yeah, me too. <sighs> Wait, what's that? <laughs> Navi! <coughs> Get some! I honestly think this turned out pretty damn cool. I think especially the scene where he enters the frame and you see it from above. I think that one almost looked like something that could have come from the movie. But yeah, obviously there's some jank here and I think the facial animation isn't really there yet for me. So I'm gonna have to revisit that in a future video because I, I see a lot of potential in this method. Uh, so yeah, what else? Um, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, don't miss out on that uh, Rococo deal in the description. So check that out. And um, yeah, thank you so much for the support. I uh, appreciate each and every one of you and uh, I'll see you in the next one.